Hey Ignite, Seth here again. So last week I had a track story, and this week I have another track story. I'm sorry if you're really getting tired of this. I promise it'll change eventually, but I love these. So what are you going to do? Now I vaulted all through middle school and high school, and it was challenging, and I met a lot of different people. I remember specifically my first meet as a 7th grader, I met a vaulter when we were warming up who was vaulting higher than everyone else, levels above everyone it appeared to be. And he didn't talk to any of us either. He would just vault and then run back to his coach, say something, and then he'd get back in line and just wait to go, wait to go run and jump again. And I immediately judged him as someone who stuck up. He, was, he thought he was too good for us. That's what I believed he was thinking. After uh, just a tiny bit of time, after we'd warmed up, he actually came up to me and he started talking to me. And he talked to me about pole vault and how I enjoyed it. And then he went on to everyone else. And he was actually really nice. And he was actually getting to know everyone just right after his warm-ups. I had misjudged him instantly just because of the one action of not talking to us at the beginning. And the truth is we do that all the time. Just from one action or one conversation we have with someone, we misjudge them. And it doesn't even have to go that far. I mean, just by someone's clothes, you can judge them, or just by how much money they have. If you see someone paying for something that you're like, they can't do that. Like, there's way too much, they have way too much money. And so then you put them in a category in your head. Or they wear the hair a different way, some way that you don't like, or you think's bad. And so they're in a different category. Or... Maybe they have expensive shoes. We label people and put them in different places and judge them for a million different things for no reason, just from one thing. When we unjustly label these people, we lose an opportunity to show God's love to them. That might You might have been their only chance to know God's grace that day, Your, their only connection to God that day or that week, that month. And you threw it away because you judged them instantly. Now, in John chapter 8, the religious leaders of Israel try to trip Jesus up in this same kind of thing that we do today. It says, The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. So, this woman was caught in the act of adultery and then brought to Jesus. Immediately brought to him. Because of the tradition of the law, the leaders believed they had the right to stone her and, pot and kill her. What they had done is label her. Because they see this one action, they put a little tag on her that says adulteress and that is all she is to them that one action defines her so in this in the story Jesus is writing in the dirt he just gets down and write and these people keep asking him hey Jesus what are we going to do we should stone her and they keep asking him like what do you think we should do trying to trick him and eventually Jesus stops writing and he says sure you can stone her but you who cast the first stone shall be the one who has not sinned. And the leaders look around, they're like, not sinned? Well, how about... Oh. Mm. And they leave. They realize, well, none of us are without sin, and they take off. They realize their mistake, and they're like, oh, we're about to get... This thing is turned around. We're going to get in trouble, not them. And so they take off. And Jesus is still riding in the dirt after they leave. Once he notices, he looks up at the woman and asks her, Where are your accusers? She tells him they're gone. There's no one here to uh, accuse me. And Jesus says, Well, neither do I. Go and sin no more. Now that is in a very important part at the very end. When Jesus says, Go and sin no more, he's revealing that he knows she can change. Just because she committed one act doesn't mean that is who she is forever. 
Jesus realizes that everyone can change. And we can too. Though the Israelite, the Israel leaders misjudged her and labeled her instantly, Jesus proved them wrong and proved that girl can be good, that she can change. So Jesus knows people can change, which means we can change. We no longer have to judge someone. When you catch yourself doing that, show them God's love. Show them what Jesus did and love them. 